come on in, pull up a chair, and take a load off, because today I'll be sharing a bit of a how to play and reviewing the Alpha, which is from Bicycle Games. So is this an area control game with a bit of bite, or is this just a toothless first foray into tabletop gaming by Bicycle? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, today I will share a bit of a how to play as well as review the Alpha, which is from Bicycle Games. But first, let me remind you, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, by all means, be sure to ring that little notification because it will not only let you know when I upload videos of my reviews and unboxings, interviews, and so forth, it'll also let you know when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursday night right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. All right, let's dive in because today I'm going to share a how to play of the Alpha which is from Bicycle Games. This is uh, one of two initial forays into tabletop gaming from Bicycle. Bicycle, of course, has been around for decades making fantastic playing cards, but now they're dipping their toes into the world of tabletop. The game is designed by Ralph Rosario with artwork provided by Andrew Hutchinson. The game is for three to six players, ages 10 and up, Plays in around 45 minutes. Does carry an MSRP of $29.99. So let's swing on over to the other camera and dive on into the Alpha. And here we have the Alpha from Bicycle Games. It is a light strategy game. That is what it's advertised as, and that is exactly what this is. So let's take a look at the game itself. I'll share a bit of how to play. So first of all, I got to point out the component quality here is really, really nicely done. Really high quality card stock, really thick. The dice that are utilized are pretty cool. They're, they're custom, they're color coded based on the prey. But one thing I do notice, and uh, it's kind of funny because you should just notice this right off the bat. Say for an example, we're seeing 997 and C7. Well, it's possible that die comes up like that. And some of the players were quick to think, oh, it's a six. It's like, well, no, this doesn't have a six at all on it. It's 997. So uh, I think maybe if there had been a little little dot like many dice will have just to show, okay, so this is the bottom of the die. Probably would have been a little helpful, but that's it. I mean, that's really my only comment on the components whatsoever. We have these really cool little wolf tokens. I guess we'll say weefles maybe. <laughs> so... For uh, everybody's pack of wolves, we'll take a little closer look at those in a moment. They're really nicely done as well. So just to kind of give you an idea, I'll show you the rules here. So this is the, the instruction booklet. Really nicely put together. Very easy to understand everything about the game itself. And very short and to the point which I definitely, definitely appreciate that as far as rule books go. So, uh, like I said, really, really nicely presented all in all for this. I was very, very pleasantly surprised by this release from Bicycle Games because Bicycle Games is not, well, Bicycle's known for playing cards, 
they've never gotten into tabletop gaming before. So we do have this as well as the exchange, which is kind of a party stock market game, which I have not played enough to review yet. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has really thrown a wrench in my multiple player reviews. So thankfully, recently, we've been able to start getting together a little more often with more people. So I have played this with a maximum of six players as well. So I will talk about a little bit about player count. Something else component wise want to show you is the cool insert. So the insert holds all the different packs of wolves. I have one pack of wolves out already. And then we also have these den cards, which once again, really nice, thick cardstock, really well done. Nothing flimsy or cheap. So very, very cool. So let's take a look. So this is a den card that every player is going to receive. So everybody's going to pick their color. They're going to get a den card. They're going to place their wolves on it. And it also tells us what happens when there's conflict. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Each of the players is going to take one of their wolves, place it on the food track. So the little game board is called the food track, which is where you're going to track the amount of food because whoever's got the most food at the end of the game, they are the alpha, they are the winner. So we've got this laid out. We're, we're going to have only so many turns. So each turn or round is going to be considered to be a week. Then we've got the different prey that's available to us. So we have in the deep forest, we've got larger prey. We've got some medium-sized prey. We've got smaller prey in the near forest. We actually have livestock from different farms that we can try to, to get. And then we can also scavenge. So with livestock and scavenging, you can only have one wolf on these. So once one of the players places one of their wolves from their pack on here, that closes this out. So effectively, this is an area control game with some dice. So I do want to point out, there is a little bit of luck involved, but the luck kind of affects everybody at the same time. So we also have the alpha token. So whoever howls the loudest gets to be the alpha. They are the first player to start off with. The alpha token actually does come into play as opposed to just being kind of like a, a first player. Each of the players will also receive a token for conflict. So we show fight or share. So whenever there's conflict, the leaders of each of their packs will decide if they're going to fight or share secretly and then reveal it. Very interesting little aspect to the game as well, which a lot of fun <laughs> as far as fighting and sharing. Something else I will mention too, we've got uh, injured and healing. So if there is conflict, you're going to have wolves get injured. So they're basically out for a turn. So once they're injured, they go here. The next turn, they're going to move over to healing. Turn after that, they come back to your pack. We also have a couple of options as far as both the large prey and the medium prey depends on how much conflict you might want in your game. So what we see here is these are the faces on the dice, on these six-sided dice. So if there's an X, that means the prey got away and nobody scores any food. If you get a C, that basically means there's going to be conflict and this will become carrion, which I'll show you after that. Anytime you've got the same number of wolves in an area, in a region, there is also going to be conflict. So, give you an example how the game is going to play out. So whoever is the alpha to start the game off, let's say it's me, they decide, all right, where do I want to go to try to score food? So as you'll see, we've got larger amounts of food, but also becomes more difficult to either get it or 
more conflict going to be involved in order to get it. So the fish, the hare, the livestock, well, you can get killed. You can have the wolf get killed because the farmer caught him, you know, trapped him, shot him, what have you. Or this, this scavenge, there's not conflict. So let's say as an example, I start off and I say, okay, well, I'm going to take one of my wolves. I'm going to go to put it on caribou. And then the next player says, okay, I'm going to deer. And then somebody says, well, I want caribou too. And then they come around and next player says, all right, well, I'm going to play it safe. I'm just going to go for some fish. Then somebody says, okay, I'm going for bison. So what happens here when you place one of your wolves in the deep forest, it does cost you one food. And with the with a large prey, you have to have more than four wolves in this region. Now, I do want to mention, the way I've laid this out is as if we were playing six players. You'll have fewer regions for prey, depending on the number of players. So let's say, as an example, they, they want to go, ah, we're going big. So we're going bison. All right, so that's going to cost them a food. We're going to move them down. And then we also have, I think that's everybody, right? Or no, we need one more. Let's say they go for the hair. All right, so everybody's going to continue going around the table, placing their wolves until they're out, until everybody's placed all of their wolves. So then what's going to happen is you're going to tally up how many wolves are in each region. So as an example, let's just say, let's do, let's do this. We're going to put the alpha, which is good for two. Let's see, there's actually two wolves together. This is the alpha token for this pack. So that represents actually three. You know what, I'll lay it down, make it a little easier for you here. But let's say another player said, yeah, you know what? As they played through, they're like, yeah, I want, I want to try a shot at that bison too. And then another player came in and said, okay, I, I'm going to come in and try to scavenge some of this. So we've got the blue and the green are dominant in that region. This is a scavenger. So if the alpha is present in that region and needs to be rolling the die, they get to roll the die. If not, then the player closest to the alpha in clockwise order gets to be the person who rolls the die. So let's roll our bison die and they get nothing, nada. So it, that would have all gone for naught. So let's say as an example here, we got 20. So since we have the same number of wolves in that region, there's conflict. There's going to be conflict for the 20 food. So the two players who are in conflict are now going to have to decide, are they going to fight or are they going to share? If they decide they're going to share, if, and this is done secretly, and you can discuss with the other players, oh, you know, come on, Bob. <laughs> you know, why don't we do, we'll just share and we'll each get 10 food. I think that works out better. Well, okay, cool. But if one person shares and the other person fights, the one who fights gets all the food. So it's sort of like, okay, you got to kind of balance things. Now, if there is conflict and both fight, they don't get any of the food. Whatever scavenger packs are hanging around are going to get that food. 
So I thought that's kind of interesting. So a lot of times when we see areas where there can be some conflict and you've got, you've got players who are tied for the most, wolves in that region, and you, maybe it's your last time around, you got one last wolf, not a bad idea to toss a wolf in there to try to scavenge from these other regions. So anyway, so the players decide, okay, are they going to fight or are they going to share? So if they fight, they don't get any food, and one of their wolves is going to end up injured. As I mentioned before, if they decide one fights and the other shares, then that means all 20 food is going to go to that player. And if they both share, then they would be simply sitting there and sharing it out. So they'd each get 10 food. What will happen is you'll have areas where you're, you're going to have multiple players, especially if you're playing a six-player game, multiple players in the different regions. And if there's conflict, all these people have to decide, okay, so should we all share? Should we fight? And then you got to keep in mind that, you know, some people are going to say, okay, well, let's say you've got four different players. If somebody thinks, okay, well, I'm going to be a wise guy. I'm going to say I'm sharing and I end up fighting. And then somebody else does the same thing. <laughs> and two other players decide they're going to, they want to share. Then those two other players are going to get to share that food. <laughs> and the ones who fought just ended up fighting and get nothing at all. There's a lot of interaction going on at the table with this game. And just looking at it, just reading through the rules, you don't necessarily get that impression. But once you start playing the game, it, it, it can be a riot. And it can get to the point where, you know, if somebody's sitting there and they're saying, oh, yeah, come on, we'll share, we'll share. And it's like, yeah, but every time you say share, you fight. I'm not, no, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't believe you. So, so it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun in that aspect as well. So you're just going to go through and you're going to resolve whatever conflicts might be taking place. You may very well have, let's use an example here. We'll use a caribou. We may have dominance in a region. Don't have to worry about conflict to start off with, at least. So when you roll the die, let's say we are rolling for the caribou here. So I have dominance. I get to roll the die. Oh, so we get conflict five. So that means we've got conflict over five. So even though I have dominance, this other pack is going to be able to fight or share. So as an example, let's say the vote was to share, and I decide I'm going to share two. So what would happen is, because I have dominance, we're going to divide it up, but I'm going to get more. So I would get three. They would get two. And of course, we would move on the track, right? Show those. I really, I really like these little tokens, the weeples or whatever whatever we want to call them. Now, what happens is because we have a C, not only does that mean that there's conflict, it also means we've also wounded some prey and it becomes carrion. So what happens here is we don't have to roll any dies on the next turn. It's automatically going to provide five food for the packs to fight over or divvy up if they decide they're going to share. And once that's done with, once another turn passes, we would flip it back over and repopulate. So the easy way to tell what you're going to need to flip over if you get a C result is just simply looking at the tile. It will show if there's a C on a die face. So once again, the fish, the hair, and scavenging there is no conflict. So let's say, as an example, somebody decided they wanted to send a wolf to livestock. And once again, the first, first player on this is the one who gets to take a shot at it. 
they get to roll the die, they could end up with a, a good chunk of food, a little bit of food, or a dead wolf. So let's, as an example, roll this real quick. Oh, look at that. What a lucky roll. So that player would get 12 food. So they would be at 17. Wow. Very well done. But it very easily could have been a D and they would lose that wolf. And the wolf, that's gone. The wolf is out of the game. There's no way for you to earn more wolves to your pack. So want to be very careful with going after livestock, just like you want to be very careful about fighting too much. Because remember, whenever you have more than one pack of wolves fighting, you're going to have to take a wolf and put it in the injured, and they're going to be out of place, so you're not going to be able to place them on the next turn. So you got to kind of balance how you go about fighting or sharing. Because you don't want to be sitting there and have, you know, half of your pack either dead or out of action. So, anyway, that is effectively how you play the alpha. You're going to go through all of these rounds here. At the end, whoever's got the most food is the winner. If there is a tie and one of the tied players happens to be the alpha, they're going to win. And if not, whoever's closest to the alpha is at the table clockwise is going to win. One thing I will mention, at the end of every turn, whoever's got the most food becomes the new alpha. So, I mean, it is possible for one player to, to continually be the alpha throughout, but not usually. It will change a little bit. So there is, there is also a push-your-luck element, obviously enough, in this, too, because you can go big, or you can go hungry, or you can go smaller and know that there's food out there. A lot of uh, little, little areas for you to, to determine what you're trying to do. When I mentioned that Bicycle is advertising this as a light strategy game, that is exactly what it is. There is some strategy involved, even though you've got some luck with the dice rolling also. All right. Like I said, that is how you play the alpha. Let's move on over to the other camera, and I will share my final thoughts as well as my review score. So what do I think of the alpha? I have to say, I was really pleasantly surprised on not only how much I enjoyed playing the Alpha, but the rest of the gang as well. Talking about the actual physical components, the rules are really nicely presented. Didn't have any problems understanding what was going on with the game, how to play it. The component quality is fantastic. I love the little wolf tokens, the weeples, I keep calling them. Those were really nicely done. The boards, not only the food track, which is essentially the game board, but also the den boards that each of the players utilize. Really nice, thick cardstock. Everything's going to hold up to a, a lot of repeated play. And I really, really do appreciate that because a lot of times when companies are making their first steps into tabletop gaming, a lot of times the component quality can sometimes leave something to be desired. Of course, Bicycle has been around for decades. I guess we should expect pretty good quality on their production, and we are not let down. Love the artwork, too. The artwork is very, very cool. The game itself, really enjoyed the gameplay. I like the fact that uh, it is an area control game, but there is some negotiation as well. When you have to figure out the dominant wolf packs that are at each of the locations, and how are you going to break up the food that's available from the prey? Are you going to fight? Are you going to share? Are you going to both fight or more than one wolf pack fight and then have some scavengers sneak in and get all that food? Got to keep all of that in mind. 
of course, because there is some negotiation and you do hide your token if you're going to fight or share, you can tell people you're going to do one thing and turn around and do something else. But you can only get away with that for so long. Trust me, as someone who's played diplomacy over the many, many years, you make a deal with somebody and they double cross you, you're not that quick to make a deal with them again. So I do like the, uh, the involvement all the players are going to have each and every round of the game, each turn of the game. Everybody should be involved in doing something. I do want to mention that the fewer players, I don't know, we, we played it with three, and it, it, I mean, we had fun, but I got to admit, you really, really want to have six players at the table playing the alpha because you're going to have a blast. Don't take the game super seriously either. That's something else I do want to point out. So if somebody double crosses you, come on, it's a game. Relax. Don't, don't be flipping the table. Do also want to mention this game is fine for younger gamers. If they don't have a problem with the fact being that it's a pack of wolves bringing down other animals to feed on. I mean, that is their prey. It is the circle of life, right? So do want to point that out. Some more sensitive gamers might have some issue with that. But I wouldn't think too many would. All in all, I think this is a fantastic effort by Bicycle Games. I welcome them to the realm of tabletop gaming. And hopefully we've got more great light strategy games on the horizon from them as well. So on a score of 1 to 10, I give the Alpha a very, very solid 8.5 out of 10. That's it for this time out. Do want to remind you, if you like this video, please, by all means, give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't. And of course, ring that notification bell. If you do that, you will not only be notified when I upload new videos, such as my reviews and unboxings, page throughs, interviews, and so on. It'll also let you know when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs right here on YouTube, Monday through Thursday night, as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. So, until I see you next time, as I have been closing out these videos during this pandemic, unfortunately, let me once again remind everyone out there, please be smart and stay safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. And once again, thank you very much for watching.